Hi, it's Emily. I'm back. So is my dog. You can hear him running around. Um, I just filmed a video with Alex about kind of what we're going through right now in our infertility journey. Um, but I wanted to just kind of do my timeline up until this point. Um, I always like to know kind of what other people have gone through. So um, I thought I would share mine too. I've just kind of um, recently been a little bit more open, well, a lot more open with the fact that we're struggling to conceive. Um, I'm my close friends and family have known for a long time, um, but I kind of kept, I was kind of, honestly kind of like ashamed. Um, here's my cat, I don't know if you can see him. I was kind of ashamed, um, and I've kind of gotten past that point now, so I'm trying to be open. Um, I figure the more people to know, the more positive thoughts we can get, the better. So I'll kind of bring you through um, what's been going on up until this point. Um, I was on the three month birth control for quite a while, several years. I was on the one month birth control for years and years and then I switched to the three month one. And I went off January 2014. I have a little list here so I don't get confused. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, I thought that I would get pregnant the first time we had sex off birth control. My whole life people um, had, I just had been kind of under the impression that it was super easy to get pregnant. Um, I had no idea everything that, that goes into it. So um, I went off birth control, we had sex, and I was like, okay, that's it, I'm pregnant. Um, definitely not the case. So I went off birth control, I think honestly like January 1st was when I had that, my last birth control period, and I did not continue taking it. Um, we were engaged at this point, um, and I didn't. I was fine being pregnant when we got married. I really was ready to have a kid um, with Alex. And um, sorry, it looked like someone was coming um, to our house. Anyways, um, so I was fine to be pregnant at the wedding. Didn't really care. Um, but obviously, that's not what happened. Um, so I was off birth control, and I just did not get a period. Um, and I was very anxious during this time because I'm like, what's up? What's wrong? What's happening with me? Why aren't, why aren't I getting a period? This isn't right. Um, I went to the doctor several times and they're like, oh, you're probably just coming off birth control. You know, if you don't get it by June, let us know. It takes your body a while. And I was like, okay. And then finally on Easter of 2014, I got a natural period, um, which was huge. We were so happy. I felt really relieved to see that. Um, so that was good and that was a normal one. Um, and then I didn't get it again. So I had one period on my own um, in, in six months. So I said after the wedding, I would go kind of try to, try to see if I could figure out what was going on. Um, so in June, which was the month that we got married, I went and I got all my hormones tested just at my, my normal doctor. And they were all fine. Um, they were on the low side. All of them were on the low side, she said, which would indicate that you're getting your period soon, but I didn't. Um, and my testosterone was very low. Like, um, my estrogen, progesterone, FSH, all that was within the normal range, but pretty low. My testosterone was um, lower than normal. Um, so they had said that, you know, you can definitely rule out um, PCOS because your testosterone is so low. Cause that was one thing that kind of kept coming up when I was Googling stuff. Um, so I was like, okay, that's a relief. And then in July, I went to the OBGYN. Um, I really didn't have a good experience there. I won't say what, what clinic I went to, but um, I I just don't have a good feeling about what, what happened there. I saw two different doctors. I heard very different things from both the doctors. Um, but I had kind of said what was going on. Um, you know, I haven't had my period. I went off birth control. I'm not getting my period regularly. We want to get pregnant. And they did a round of Provera, which is progesterone, um, to induce a period. And then, um, and then a round of Clomid. It appears that I did not respond to the Clomid because I never got a period. And I didn't get pregnant. Um, after just that first cycle, they were just kind of like, I would go see a specialist. Something's not right. It was, it was a pretty scary moment for me. Um, I feel like something must be drastically wrong with me. I really was uneducated. I didn't know what was going on. Um, so then we just kind of decided to take a step back and go back to my, my primary doctor who I, who I trust a lot. So in August, we went back to the primary doctor and um, she ordered an ultrasound because she said this, this sounds like PCOS. Um, and 
I was under the impression that that meant that I would have been overweight, that I would be hairy. Um, so I was like, no, I can't have that. But um, she said there's, you know, everyone, you know, lots of different people have it. Not everyone has those symptoms. So let's do an ultrasound. I did the ultrasound and it came back and she said that does indicate PCOS because I had a lot of those little cysts. Um, so that was a big blow to me. I'm not sure why I took that so hard, but, um, that, that was a hard month for me. Um, so she put me on metformin, which is a medicine commonly used for diabetes, but you can also use it if you have PCOS and it kind of helps you, um, get a period. Actually, metformin helped me a lot. I started to get regular periods. I think the first couple were like 40 days apart. And then I steadily had, um shorter periods where they ended up kind of staying around 35 days i think i had like four cycles in a row that were 35 days and we were just trying on our own to um to get pregnant i was testing positive on ovulation predictor kits around day 25 so i was ovulating pretty late and then i was also getting my period pretty soon after i ovulated um which was just something that i was kind of taking note of um so i thought that i had kind of a short luteal phase i had said to my husband, um, if we're not pregnant by the spring, I want to see a fertility specialist. Also because we, we had met the deductible that year, so I, um, this year, so I wanted to get in there while it was covered. So in the spring, I think in March, was our first appointment with the fertility specialist. Actually, I went with my mom. Um, and she said, um, I, I kind of Looking at your numbers, I kind of doubt it's PCOS. It sounds like it's more hypothalamic dysfunction, which would indicate that my hypothalamic is sending out the wrong level of hormones at the wrong time or something. I don't really know. I don't think the diagnosis is really that important at this point. Um, but she said the metformin seems to be working for you, so just stay on that. Um, and the month before we started our IUI, I actually went from my normal 35 day cycle to a 28 day cycle, which was pretty exciting for us. Um, we felt good about that. Um, so I went to the reproductive medicine. I had to get kind of my hormones tested again. And then Alex and I both had to get our infectious diseases tested and a couple other things, I think. Um, and then I had to get the HSG, which sucked. That hurt. Um, I went to the hospital. Um, that's where the HSG is where they're kind of looking to see if your fallopian tubes are opened or closed off. Um, and they inject a dye into your uterus and see if your fallopian tubes fill up. Sometimes if there's some buildup or if your body tenses up, there's some, um, the doctor has to push a little harder to get the dye through, which is what happened in my case. I was really relieved that the dye went through. We were very happy that there was no blockage and everything was normal. But it hurt. It did not feel good. Um, and several people had told me like, oh, I had one of those. They cleared my tubes right out or flushed my tubes right out and I got pregnant that cycle. So I was kind of hoping that that was what was gonna happen, but that didn't happen. But still, we were glad that that was normal. Um, so after that came back normal, they said that next cycle I could start an IUI, which we did last month, which was June, 2015. So about um, um, a year and a half since we started trying. Um, we did the... We just did a video about this, so you can check that video out too, but we did um, Folistim to stimulate the follicles, and then um, HSG to induce ovulation, then the insemination, and then um, my clinic always does progesterone supplements um, until you either have a pregnancy test, in which case you continue the progesterone supplements, or you get your period, in which case you stop and then schedule your next ultrasound. So. I did get my period, which was devastating. Um, I was really thinking that we were gonna get pregnant this first time, we just needed a little extra help, and we didn't, so that was hard. Um, so the one good thing was that I responded to the medicine, and then also that my, lute, my luteal phase, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, um, was longer this time, it was like the, it was like 14 days instead of like my, my average like nine or 10 days. So that was good. The progesterone supplements were helping. Um, so we are gearing up for round two of IUI. And I think that we will have at least three if the second one doesn't work. And then we're gonna have to kind of reevaluate and get a, a different plan. Um, so tomorrow is my 
ultrasound, my day three ultrasound, where they just kind of see how everything's looking and then um, let me know when I'm going to start the Falastim. So we just ordered all that medicine. Um, so wish us luck. Keep us in your thoughts. And we will keep you posted on um, how everything turns out. I hope this was interesting and informative. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, and let me know what your, what your journeys has, have been like. All right. Take care. Bye.